Welcome back to Reputation at Stake. I'm Fisher and Pepper is not with me right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and make supper for dinner tonight before she gets home. I'm a manly man, so I handle my meat with gloves. Love is in the word glove. All right, we've got two pounds of beef and we've got two pounds of sausage. Same stuff, just different bags. These are from the local butcher and they're clean. They don't have any ammonia in it like we learned last week with the pink slime. What we're gonna do is go ahead and dump in a pound of the two pounds of beef and just kind of get it pushed down so it makes one layer like so. And now we will take one pound of sausage and squish it about into the beef. And we'll grab the other pound of sausage and put this in here with the other sausage. Now, we've got a good mix. We don't wanna mash it too much because it can make it tough, some say, and uh, but we do wanna get it spread out. So. Now we're gonna move on to our first set of seasonings and that is the garlic, onion, pepper, and gelatin. The garlic, onion, and pepper are each one teaspoon a piece and then there are four tablespoons of gelatin mix. Then we have half a cup of Parmesan cheese. We'll go ahead and add these together. This replaces the breading that you would normally see in meatloaf. And in carnivore, we used to do pork rinds, but they come out kind of chewy. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in here right now and just spread it out. And now the Parmesan. And now we have one pound of bacon pre-cooked in little tiny squares cut up. We'll spread that out. Just kind of mix it in. And now we've got four eggs mixed together here and we'll put this in. Okay, and now we've got the, the package and a half of cream cheese. We're gonna hold off on that and we're gonna mix this in. So you pick it up and just kind of mush it about and get it all mixed in. Gently massage it. This is the best part, you guys. There's no measuring, you just pick it up and twirl it and get it all mixed in evenly. If you don't get it perfect, no one's grading you. It just gonna taste horrible. Just kidding, just kidding. Um, get some of that egg in there, get it all in there. The goal is so that there's not a lot of drippy egg. That's kind of a key indicator that you still need to do some mixing if you see some drippy egg. And um, try not to be too forceful with it so that it doesn't get too tough. Okay, now we're at a good spot now. It's gonna be cream cheese in the middle, like a, like a burger, like a double layered burger. So the goal is to make two separate layers of, of the beef. So we're gonna kind of pull some aside here and make room for one layer of the meatloaf to be completed that will hold all of the, uh, all of the, the cheese. So I'm gonna, I have a bowl here. I'm gonna put it in the bowl and kind of make sure I have just enough to cover it when I'm done. You could also turn these into meatballs if you wanted to, but we're making meatloaf today. So, okay, got a nice, Got a nice layer going here. The bottom of the pan is blanketed with meat. Sure, we've got enough all the way down evenly. It's kind of tricky because you don't want it to be too thin. You don't want to see the glass like I did. Okay. So that, that covers one layer right there. Now we'll go ahead and get the cream cheese put in there. Okay, so grab this. And go ahead and put just kind of just kind of tear it apart in little pieces. It's really sticky. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not like peanut butter with his knife. Just gonna take it in little chunks. Spread it out. Yeah, this is a little different than your normal meatloaf because it's got big big chunk of cheese in it, but it actually is pretty good. 
So it's not just meat. And that's one of the complaints on carnivore is people say, I wish I had, I could have more than just meat, but we, you can, but you gotta be creative on what you do with cheese and, and whatnot, different flavors. Okay, so we've kind of got it all spread out now. All right, so I'm just gonna push this down because I, a little bit so that it, they're touching. Okay, so we've got all the chunks laid out and spread out. And now I'm gonna add, I'm gonna go ahead and add the, the rest of the meat on top. Okay, so this is just about all that you need to do and we'll put it in the oven at about 385 for about one hour. And then we'll cut it up into little squares and and have, have dinner. And if I can, I'll get a shot of this hopefully before we're done and you'll see it cooked. But that's it, that's the hardest part. Cut it up into squares and ready to serve. All right guys, back to the show. Welcome back to Reputation at Stake. I'm Fisher and this is Pepper and we would like to give you our update for the week. Yeah, so this week I went to the butcher and I ordered, well, I didn't order, but I got a bunch of meat and I, as I'm paying for my meat, I actually blurted it out. I'm like, do you sell the cows? Like half a cow, a whole cow, quarter cow? And the lady kind of chuckled and she said, yeah, I do. And she gave me a piece of paper and it had the prices on it. And um, at the butcher, we're paying $4.99 for beef, for ground beef or, um, yeah, ground beef and ground chuck. And um, <laughs> another a quick side thought is um, there was this lady who had gotten the ground chuck and then she got the ground beef and she goes, my husband thought the ground chuck was too dry, so she got the ground beef and then um, the worker said there's no fat difference between the two. I thought that was interesting little tidbit. Um, so anyways, I blurted out, do you sell cows? She said yes. I compared the prices and I think it's only $3.79 per pound at our butcher for half a cow and you get about 300 to 400 pounds of meat. Oh. Um, so I need to go back and I, I want to find out what the breakdown is. I want to know how many steaks, how many roasts, how many, how much hamburger, uh, is it, is there like a butcher fee? Because, uh, mom found one in Pennsylvania that also sells by the half cow and, um, their prices are like 380 like one penny off, but they charge 70 cents per pound for the butcher fee. Oh. So I need to find out, is there hidden fees? Um, are you getting actually half the cow or are you just getting like 400 pounds of meat? And what are the cuts? So I thought that was interesting that it's so much cheaper. I mean, we're, I've seen in the stores 16 to $20 for certain cuts of meat. So if you're getting that at an average of three and $4, I mean, I think if we did the, um, from, let's see, my projections of how much it costs, how much the three of us eat per year, I think we would save about $3,000 a year. Oh, wow. Buying, uh, I think, was it four and a half cows? Uh, well, four half cows. So that would be two and a half full-size cows <laughs> that three people eat. Wow. So, um, That's a lot yeah. of money. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of cows. But... Um, yeah, it just seems um, the more we do it, the better I'm really liking the butcher meat. And then I didn't watch the video yet, but, um, Trinity Van Aker, he's a, uh, rancher out in Montana. He actually did a breakdown on what happens when you buy a cow from a rancher or something like that. And that was today. And I'm like, no, I'm talking about buying your meat local today. You're not allowed to, you know, but his channel is much bigger and all that. So anyways, that was kind of funny that. You know, two great minds think alike, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so have you noticed a difference in the meat? Yeah, like I would say when it comes to a uh, burger, it's always been a struggle to eat burger. Um, sometimes you'll get better burger. I, I don't know how to explain it because uh, it's it's not, I don't really notice how I feel afterwards. I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking mm -hmm. more like sometimes when I'm eating burger, it just doesn't taste like like steak. Now, I know it's not steak, right? It's burger, but... Well, sometimes it is steak. Well, sometimes it is steak. <laughs> right? It's just ground up because that's how they can repackage it. Right. They as in stores and butchers. But there's a taste to hamburger that's just... So a lot of times it's just a little bit 
not as great. Maybe if it's a greasy or I, I haven't been able to figure it out, but it wasn't quite the same. And so now that we've got this new hamburger being used uh, for like meatloaf and different things, I'm noticing that it actually tastes, uh, I want to say cleaner is the only word that comes to mind, yeah. but like it doesn't have like a weird uh, taste to it. Weird is such a, it's such an odd word. It's almost like, um, it always tastes a bit off. It's like off and I'm not thinking spoiled as much as I'm thinking like, it's just different when you're eating. I didn't know it was called pink slime. Right. From last week's video. From we last week's video. Pink slime, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that they put ammonia in the meat to like almost pre-digest it or wash, wash it from bacteria, <laughs> yeah. you know? So uh, yeah, it just has a different taste. It's a better taste from yeah. a butcher. You don't have like a weird stomach afterwards. Right. I, yeah. feel, I feel much better. Um, the house smelled really good when I walked in. Yeah. Uh, we were just talking a moment ago. Uh, <laughs> so we've got some meatloaf cooking Ooh, for dinner. thank you. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. I'm doing that uh, recipe with the cream cheese. Okay. So yeah, that seems get... to be one of our favorites and mom loves it too. So that's... Yeah. That's a nice treat. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. It's on plan. It's on so, plan. Yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah. The cream cheese. Cream cheese is not a cow, but it comes from. It comes from a cow. Right yeah. Out of the, out of the udder. I mean, until we, I guess for me, until like um, I have big long stalls, we tend to use cheese as our band aid in carnivore. And then as we lose weight, we stop losing as much weight and then we pull the dairy out. Yeah. And cheeses so. and. Yeah, that's another thing um, is dairy. So at the butcher, they actually sell milk that has been pasteurized but not homogenized because you get the uh, cream line in there. And um, I, I'm i sure I've talked about this in the past, but I'm not sure why we can't buy raw milk. Mm. I mean, it's as natural as eating beef. It's as natural as, you know, pulling your salad right out of the ground and eating a salad. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's a natural product. It's not, it's not made in a, um, a oh, yeah, like a factory, but like, what do you call the, um, chemical reactor, um, nuclear plant, nuclear plant, you know, it's not a byproduct of nuclear waste. So why can't we go to a farm? And if the farmer's willing to sell you raw milk, why can't we buy raw milk? You know, like, it, it 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 kind of frustrates me. I mean, living in America is great. We have so many freedoms, and yeah. there's so many really cool things. But like when you look back at history and you realize, like, what was it, hundred years ago, maybe 150 years ago, you didn't need a license to purchase these things. Now, it all depends on how the animals are raised. I get it. Like the reason they made these rules about milk is they raise cows in a barn. They never saw the light of day. They never ate fresh grass. They stood in their own waste, and it was horrendous conditions. And I am not one to give any money towards that kind of situation. But if you make friends with the farmer and you know their animals are out on grass and that, you know, they're taking really good care of their animals and they're washing the udders and maybe even checking for the bad bacteria in the milk, what would be so wrong with us being able to get our hands on actual raw milk? So there's with proper testing. Problem. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on. People live for thousands of years without proper testing. Thousands. What are human race is at what? 6,000 years? Yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> and the Bible says the land flowing with milk and honey. So milk can't be that bad for you. <laughs> right. Right. And some germs, you know, your body. Yeah. Yeah. You need you need the good bacteria yeah. in your body. Like, yeah. like I said a couple weeks ago, we're basically meat eating plants. <laughs> yeah. We need bacteria to grow. Yeah. So there's there's my soapbox for the day is I just want to buy, you know, legal legalize the food people <laughs> like what what does it take to get that way that raw milk that raw milk yeah there's that's, a lot of healing properties that that people have experienced yeah you can buy raw cheeses now very specific cheeses but at least that's coming on the market it's easier to get your hands on you got any updates uh update for me i'm i lost 2 pounds mm -hmm. um and i'm just you know plowing through i noticed that we eat like smaller portions and that's actually okay um for me right now, I don't. Yeah, like our bodies are um, normalizing, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So. Which is good. That might also contribute to the weight loss. I don't. 
like you said, weight, you can't use a scale for everything. Well, I heard you using the deadlift uh, yes. a couple times this week. Yeah, a couple times. Um, once to prepare for moving the, st the bedrooms around to make this like studio, which I'm going to see if this lighting is working. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we could look really scary or really good. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to keep playing with it and figure out and dial it in. But it's kind of a neat setup for now. This is this is it, you know. Um, see how it goes. Uh, so yeah, I did the deadlift and a couple times. And um, yeah, when you, as soon as you finish, you can feel your heart like just like you have all this uh, endorphins and adrenaline, you know, or whatever. So it feels kind of feel a little bit good. Feels pretty good. Yeah, like and you feel like you accomplished something. You know, you got your muscles activated. So that, like, the second time that I went and did the deadlift, I felt better. I, the first time I did it, I gave myself, like, three days to heal. And then I went back and did it again. And so I need to just keep on keep on that. Little but increments so that you're not hurting your body right. where you can never work out again. Right. I forget. One of the doctors, he uh, was doing squats, like, weighted squats. And he got to the point where he had done well over 100 and his body just wasn't tiring out anymore. And he goes, I'm I'm just bored. So he stopped. Wow. Because, <laughs> you know, he's been doing carnivore for eight years now or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So something to look forward to. Yeah. Let me know when that happens. <laughs> I will. It'll probably be obvious. I'll be running around. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, how about you? How was your update? So I also lost two pounds. Okay. And I thought I was doing really great. And then, like, so today is our way 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 day, like the final way day, right? Yeah. And um, I gained three pounds back. Oh. So I know it's water. Um, so yesterday I ate out with friends and I had, um, uh, it was like a lunch meat sandwich, but I didn't have the bread. I didn't have the tomato. I didn't, I didn't even eat the lettuce. Um, so I had that. And then mom and I had shrimp last night, shrimp and um sausage and bacon and I don't know if it was so much salt my body retained weight and I had an onion ring oh, <laughs> I cheated yeah, there you go. I cheated I had an onion ring so I paid for it last night in pain but it was really good because she's sensitive to the to certain seasonings yeah seasonings. gluten or cheat or um sugars or weird yeah. weird stuff so yeah I All have right. some cool stuff I've been studying guys and I can't wait to share with you but I'm not quite there yet. Uh, I've been learning about lipedema. It's different than lymphedema, and it has to do with um, like painful fat throughout your body. Um, I've been doing a study on sleep because that's something I've been struggling with and trying to figure out the best way to get that accomplished, to have better restful sleep instead of this waking up at two o'clock and being miserable. Mm. Um, I thought there was a third thing, too, I was just kind of like looking into, but the, the first two, oh, I know, um, Draining your lymph system is something else that I'm really interested in. So we'll keep you posted on how those things are going, but those videos are coming. <laughs> I just need more research. I'm interested. That sounds exciting. Yeah. This will be good. Yeah. So that's what I've been doing. Okay. So two pounds over here and almost two pounds. <laughs> but we'll see you next week, guys. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Take God care. God bless.